parents. Welcome to AP Art History. My name is Miss Rush and I'm your teacher for this year of AP Art History and I'm excited to introduce you to um, the class and the greatness of this class. I'm completely obsessed with it. Um, I spend a lot of time working on it and um, making the PowerPoints better and trying to make the class really exciting for your for your kids. So let's go ahead and I'm going to share my screen and let's go through the class. Okay, um, so uh, like I said, my name is Miss Rush. Um, this is my email. If you ever need to get a hold of me, you can contact me there. This is um, an artist, Sandra Botticelli, that um, we will be learning about this year. Um, and a little bit to before we dive into the class, and I think that's that's going to be the heart of what we're going to talk about. I think it's and I think it's kind of nice if you know who I am and kind of what I'm about, um, and who your your son or daughter is going to be with for this year. Um, I've been teaching for 24 years. Um, I opened West Ranch and I was previously at Saugus and I was recruited to open West Ranch. It's an exciting experience for a teacher to be able to open a new school. Um, I teach all levels of art. I teach AP Art History. This is my fifth year of teaching it. I teach AP Art and Design and I teach Art 1A and 1B and I've taught a it, um, uh, art 2D. So I've taught all levels of art throughout my career. Um, I like to um, travel and visit art museums. Um, that is my number one like goal in life <laughs> is actually to get to all the artworks um, and be able that we learn about in AP and be able to um, uh, look at them in person. Um, and I'm very active. Um, so just to show you some um, artworks and some places that I've been to look at, and these are all artists that we study, and many are actually pieces that we study. Um, this is uh, an installation in Dusseldorf, Germany, and I'm kind of up there and there, you know, climbing around inside um, these, this big kind of like installation piece that's super cool. Um, I make artwork as well. I'm, um, I do a combination of, of drawing and some painting and screen printing. So mixed media and I like to fragment elements. Um, and then um, here are some other places um, that I've been. My favorite place in the world is Berlin. I love there. I love visiting there. Um, and then I'm also very active. So I um, one of my most proud things. Um, I'm I'm from Chicago, originally from New York, and I've moved here like 21 years ago. And I always wanted to do the California kind of dream or California cliche of is, you know, going to the beach, going to the mountains and going to the desert all in one day. And I actually did that um, two years ago and um, went surfing at Santa Monica, Big Bear on their last day and then hiked in Palm Desert. Um, that was definitely a feat that I was really proud of. Um, so let's talk about the class. This is more exciting. Um, the benefits of AP is that um, in AP, you acquire knowledge to identify and understand. We'll be comparing um, common characteristics in a diverse group of, of artworks. We're going to look at different art from different periods, different styles, different media. Um, uh, students engage in analytical thinking. Um, you know what's kind of interesting about this, which I think is fascinating, is that um, in France, French um, uh, med students have to take art history um, uh, in their studies so that they learn to analyze um, a work of art and then that will help them analyze um, symptoms in a body um, uh, and what a person is kind of experiencing. So I think that's super cool. Um, and you'll get um, students will gain an understanding of the relationships between the four main areas that the students are going to learn about is the content, um, is what the artwork is about, the story, the narrative, the form is the visual attributes that an artwork has, the context is what's going on outside of the artwork, what's the historical uh, temperament of the time, um, getting to know the artists themselves and what their interests are, and then function, what's the purpose of this artwork, what does the artist want you to get out of it. Um, there is the benefits of AP. It's a very select offering. Um, as of just like three years ago, I think this number is up a little bit, but there were only 24,000 exams nationwide. So it's a very kind of, it distinguishes the student from other students if a student takes AP art history because it's not a super common class. It's not like AP Euro where everybody takes it. This is a very small select um, class. Um, it's very unique. It's um, exotic, kind of special. It's the only AP course that really makes a student, it forces a student to think about the world, like history, culture, and art. 
Um, it's fascinating to me. It's like a travel show every day. We're going somewhere new, um, learning about something new. Um, and it gives us a, an expanded war view of the world. I know that the class has changed me and students say it every year, how it's like gave them a much, you know, bigger, broader um, worldview. Um, and I think, you know, today that can only be helpful. And, in the, and also I love it that all students begin at the same level. So when students come into a class, like we've all taken, they've all taken English and math and history and science before. But when students walk into AP Art History, they've never taken this class before. So it's pretty exciting that way that it's it's totally new for them and we learn together. And I love it when, you know, every student is coming in with their kind of bank of knowledge and experience and information. And my favorite part of the class is when I put up a new artwork and all we do is discuss the artworks. Um, we put up an artwork and then I let them talk about it. They talk and they analyze it. They break it down. They describe what they see. We state the obvious. We state the not not so obvious. We ask questions, and then what I do is I support their 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 um, uh, you know their statements. I ask them more questions, and then we go through the PowerPoint and we formally learn about the artist. So our students are really fantastic. You they this year I am so impressed with them. They're such a great group. They're really good at at talking and having a class discussion online. That was my fear. I'm like what's that going to be like? Like how do we how do I get students to talk in class and they're doing a really good job. I have some really good talkers. I really want to get the whole class into it. Um, talking more and maybe chatting um, in the chat box more. So but I think we're off to a really good start. So I'm excited about that. Um, okay, um, and then just let's go into what the course is going to be. It's new and improved. So when I started teaching this five years ago, they redesigned the curriculum. So the college board said, okay, we've done it this way for a long time. It no longer fits. It was long overdue. I'm so excited that I came in on the new curriculum because oh, I love it. I am drinking the Kool-Aid. Um, before it was, I can tell you what it was before and then how it changed and how I believe it's a better course. Before 75% of the artworks um, were um, from European um, or European art and it didn't get contemporary. Where now only 50% of the artworks is European, 50% is global. So we're going to literally, you know, every continent, every, you know, every country, not every country, but we're, we're um, obviously in 250 pieces, but um, we're, we're really covering the globe and we are also getting much more contemporary. So we're starting with like cave paintings and we're going up to artists that are working today. Um, so I think that makes it, it's just better. It covers more, more um, types of work. There are 10 content areas. Um, I think most most art historians will start with global prehistory and then they go through everything and they end in global contemporary and I think that's probably 98-99% of the of the um, teachers do that. I'm a little bit unorthodox. I start at the end with global contemporary with artwork now and then we are going to start in global global prehistory and move on. The reason why I do that is one, the students get really excited about this content area. It's work that's happening now. It's issues that they're kind of interested in. Number two, when you talk about the formal qualities of an artwork, line, shape, form, color, value, space, unity, contrast, um, balance, pattern. When you talk about that, the artworks today has so much diversity you can. When you're looking at a stone, um, a stone painting, like it's, there's not a lot there to be able to talk about. So they really learn vocabulary um, if with the more current works. Um, I can teach it easier then. Um, plus they love it so much. It's really a hook for them. They kind of get into it. It's really juicy content. And, um, and then it's also in my wheelhouse. Like I, you know, I'm a generalist and I try to like promote that. Like but I do have some specific areas, global contemporary, Renaissance, um, anything European and American, modernism, any of that is like my areas of like um, interest. However, um, teaching this class has made me like expand into every kind of artwork and I love it all. Um, the artworks go from 500 BC to present. Um, new curriculum requires a deeper learning. Um, so before, students would have to, they would look at a thousand images um, and the old curriculum, the new curriculum, we are looking at 250. We know the 250. So before, when you look at a lot of, a lot of artwork, you would know just a little bit about just like, you know, you wouldn't get that deep and you would know just like a little bit about everything where now it's like you get to learn about these artworks and we learn much more about them. So they really get into like, you know, the content form context and, and uh, function um, deeper. 
um, and it's expanded global cur cur curriculum. So it's kind of, in it's very inclusive. Um, expectations for the course, um, all district and school rules and digital policies will be followed. Our class has been terrific with that. Um, uh, students need to be on time to all Zoom sessions. We're really good with that. I think today I had like one person come in a little bit later, but that's, I feel like within the two minutes, I'm even gonna try to get them in a little bit sooner um, just cause I'm trying to take a, you know, doing attendance is really tricky um, online. Um, course grades will consist of templates. That's what we do every day when we put an artwork up, they take notes and they fill out these templates. We have quizzes. They just passed. Um, everyone did a phenomenal job on their quizzes. Everyone got 11 out of 11 on our first quiz two days ago. And then tests, um, we'll have unit tests. And then also discussions is a huge part of it. Before discussions were worth a little bit more, I'm gonna thinking of kind of debating. I'm kind of flexible and trying to feel things out. I might make that a little bit less. It's just more difficult in the online environment. And in the end, you know, I try to tell my students like, you know, have a positive and forgiving attitude. Like I promise I will make mistakes, um, but that we can all kind of learn together. Um, okay, and we, here we have our birth of Venus that we looked at. So just to look at what some of the um, global uh, um, content areas are, this is where we're starting. We are starting with global contemporary and you can see the two, um, the middle, the two artists in the middle and the one on the right are the artists that we've already covered and we'll be getting to Jeff Koons, the artwork on the left um, and shortly. Um, we're going to then we're going to jump into global prehistory and we're going to look at Stonehenge, we're going to look at um, the Lascaux cave paintings um, and we will next go into the Pacific. Um, really cool. Um, all of these, everything that was made was made for a function. To, it was purpose. It had a purpose, not just hanging on a wall. Um, they actually, um, you know, they were they were objects that were used every single day. Um, we'll go to Africa. This was like a new content area for me. I knew a little bit about it. I, I'm a mi I minored in art history when I was in college, and I loved it so much. I loved um, Africa so much and I wanted to take more classes, more, you know, wanted to learn more about it. So this, this unit is really fantastic. Ancient Med, Ancient Med is a really big unit. The students really like this. They know a lot about this, which is awesome because when we have the dis these discussions, students, students that are really good with history will bring that in. Students that know about religion bring that into the conversation. Students that are really good in mathy stuff, when we get to like architecture and stuff, they bring that in. So it's really like terrific, like how everyone kind of, we learn from each other. And it's like, if you know something, say something and help us be smarter. Um, and then we'll go into early Europe and colonial Americas, and we'll go to later Europe and the Americas and get more modern. Indigenous Americas, another unit that was very exciting. Um, and then Asia is split into um, two sections. We have West and Central Asia. And then we also have Southeast and Southeast Asia. And a lot of students know a lot about this and a lot about like different religions um, come into play here that students know. So that is um, the end of my presentation and I hope you enjoyed it. And if you have any questions, you can contact me um, through email. Um, I really try to communicate with the students during Zoom. If they have questions, it's best to work that way. However, of course, they can always contact me um, through email. Um, and um, if you have any questions, like please reach out and um, let's um, ask your, oh, you know what else? I wanted to, can I, I'm gonna go back. I wanna share screen again. I'm sorry. Is it? Yeah, it is over. Okay, never mind. I'm sorry. <laughs> okay. Um, well, thank you for your time. And I hope you um, definitely ask your, your son or daughter about the class and about what they're learning about, because the more they can talk about it, the more they'll understand it and learn it better in their heads. So that would be um, great. Okay. Thank you. Bye. Thanks for coming.